Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we will delve into Everybody Has a Podcast Except You, a hands on guide from 2021 that encourages and instructs you to initiate your own podcast venture. This book demystifies the world of podcasting, making it an accessible medium for everyone, irrespective of your budget constraints or technical prowess. All you need is a bit of determination and persistence to create something truly outstanding. The authors of this comprehensive guide are none other than the McElroy Trio, Justin, Travis, and Griffin. They host a slew of chart-topping podcasts, including My Brother, My Brother and Me, Sawbones, Schmanners, and The Adventure Zone, among others. Their accomplishments are not limited to podcasts. They have inspired a TV show spin-off and have penned a New York Times best-selling book and graphic novels. Everybody Has a Podcast Except You is a must-read for those who nurture a secret desire to start their own podcast, die-hard fans of the McElroy family, and aspiring podcast hosts who lack technical skills or funds. This book breaks down the barriers, opening the doors to the world of podcasting to everyone. Everybody has a podcast, except you. A how-to guide from the first family of podcasting. Introduction. Discover your voice. Unlock your podcast potential without fear of failure. Picture this. The year is 2010, and three brothers, Justin, Travis, and Griffin McElroy, take their first steps into the vast and largely uncharted realm of podcasting. Their creation a little show called My Brother, My Brother, and Me. They weren't audio gurus or seasoned radio hosts. In fact, they were just ordinary folks, blessed with ordinary levels of talent. But fast forward a decade, and you'd find these brothers at the helm of not one, but multiple chart-topping podcasts, captivating live audiences across the United States. So what's their secret? Well, that's exactly what we're about to explore. Through this audacious journey, you'll master the intricate world of podcasting, spanning from the conception of captivating themes to perfecting your final cut. The best part? You don't need to break the bank or be a tech whiz. What you really need is an electrifying idea that gets your heart racing and the grit to keep pursuing your vision even when facing setbacks. In this immersive audio experience, you'll discover why your humble closet might be the unsung hero of soundproof recording studios, how your unique fascinations can be converted into a captivating podcast, and the critical importance of consistency in nurturing a dedicated listenership. Part 1. Passion Fuels Content. Craft a podcast around your unique obsessions, so you've decided to leap into the world of podcasting. The first question that arises is, where to begin? Here's an idea. Delve into your obsessions. What sets your soul on fire? What sparks endless conversations and sends you spiraling down the rabbit holes of the internet? Justin McElroy, for instance, found his muse in workplace training videos. You might be riveted by the courtship rituals of moths. No matter what your fascination, remember this. Genuine passion can't be counterfeited. It's this raw excitement that will magnetize your listeners. The main takeaway here is, build your podcast around a topic that captivates you. Once you've selected your subject, do some reconnaissance to find out what else is being said about it in the podcasting world. With approximately 850,000 podcasts available globally, if you've picked a popular topic like the reality TV show Survivor, there's a significant likelihood that someone else shares your interest. Finding multiple podcasts echoing your chosen subject doesn't necessarily mean you should abandon ship. Instead, you could strive to unearth a fresh perspective. Your unique take on the topic could be even more influential than the topic itself. So while there might be several podcasts discussing Survivor, you could carve out your niche, say by scrutinizing the evolving strategies across seasons. As you hone in on your angle, Leverage any specific expertise you possess. Justin and his wife, Sydney, for example, built their podcast on bizarre medical history, thanks to her background as a doctor. 
So if you have specialized knowledge or training, don't shy away from using it. Once you've got your topic, it's time to distill it into a succinct one-sentence pitch. Make sure your podcast can be encapsulated in a single line so it's easy for your listeners to share with their friends. For instance, one of the McElroy Brothers' podcasts can be summarized with three non-famous individuals hustle their way into a blockbuster movie. This brief line is enough to give a potential listener a taste of the show's flavor. Now that you've crystallized your topic, your unique spin, and a catchy pitch, pause and ask yourself two things. First, are you prepared to dedicate your precious time to actualizing this project? And secondly, would you be an eager listener if someone else was producing this podcast? If you answer a resounding yes to both, congratulations, you found your winner. Buckle up and get ready to dive into the deep end of pre-production. Part 2. Consistency is king. Cultivate a faithful audience with a regular podcast format. Can you recall the last podcast you couldn't stop listening to? Did it accompany you during your evening jogs? Or kept you company while you indulged in your weekend hobby of painting? Tuning into podcasts has become a ritual for many. It slots seamlessly into their daily routines, enriching mundane tasks. When you embark on the journey of podcast creation, you're essentially setting up listener expectations. Fulfill these expectations consistently, and you'll cultivate a devoted, engaged fan base. The core insight here is consistency in your podcast format paves the way to a dedicated audience. When you set out to construct your podcast, there are several crucial format decisions you'll need to make. One such pivotal choice is whether to host the show solo or enlist the aid of a co host. If your podcast is rich with biographical information, another voice might cause unnecessary diversions. On the other hand, if you're hosting a casual film review podcast, a co-host could spice up the conversation with different perspectives. Just ensure your co-host is equally passionate about your shared project and is ready for a long-term commitment. Abrupt changes mid-season can disorient listeners. Another major decision revolves around the length of your podcast. Once again, this relies heavily on the nature of your content. Some shows, like Memory Palace, pack a punch in a brisk 15-minute episode. Others, such as Hardcore History, offer expansive dives into riveting subjects, lasting anywhere from four to five hours. Remember, though, never resort to mindless babbling to kill time. Value your listeners' attention as a priceless asset. Respect it by ensuring every minute of your podcast delivers substantial content. You should also consider how often you can realistically churn out fresh episodes. Can you keep up with a weekly release? Or would a bi-weekly or monthly schedule be more manageable? Remember, loyal listeners appreciate regular releases. Creating a podcast involves experimentation and learning from your missteps. You might plan an hour-long episode, but find that 45 minutes flow more naturally. It could take a few tries and a handful of mistakes to discover what works best for you. But once you uncover that winning formula, adhere to it steadfastly. Part 3. Strive for entertainment. No matter your podcast's genre, keep your audience engaged. Ever tuned into a podcast discussing a topic that captivated your interest, only to switch it off halfway because it was unbearably dull? Even the most intriguing content can stumble if it's not conveyed compellingly. When you're mapping out the presentation of information in your podcast, the first question to pose is, what's your primary objective? Are you hoping to tickle your listener's funny bone? or educate them about a crucial issue. The underlying purpose of your podcast significantly sways how you choose and arrange your content, regardless of whether it's an interview show or a historical exploration. The essential insight here is, aim to captivate your audience, no matter what genre your podcast falls under. For example, consider Justin and Sidney McElroy's podcast, Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine. The show transports listeners back in time, delving into some of the most bizarre medical treatments employed throughout history. However, the McElroys always kept their primary objective in sharp focus, to entertain their listeners rather than deliver a comprehensive historical account. To ensure they did this, they didn't merely cobble together a cluster of facts. Instead, 
they wove compelling narratives. This resulted in a rigorous selection of information to include in the podcast. If it lacked a robust storyline or high entertainment value, it was left out. An effective strategy to retain listener interest is to break down the show into predictable sections. Every show begins with an introduction, where you reveal the title and outline what it's about. This is followed by the central portion of the show, which can be segmented into various smaller blocks. One segment could allow listeners to share their stories, while another could host a lively discussion between you and your co-host on a hot topic and so on. Having distinct segments not only familiarizes your audience with what to anticipate from your podcast, but also aids you as a host to maintain an engaging rhythm. If one segment starts to drag, you can swiftly move to the next to keep up the show's momentum. The podcast concludes with your outro, where you say goodbye to your audience, promote your other shows, preview the next episode, and coax listeners to subscribe. Keep this segment short and snappy, or risk losing your audience's attention. Remember, with astute framing and engaging storytelling, even the most arcane information can transfix your audience. Part 4. Build a stellar studio on a budget. No need to splash cash for quality recordings. You've meticulously researched your content, resolved whether to recruit a co-host, and figured out the structure for your show. Now comes the question, how do you actually record your podcast? It might be tempting to opt for the convenience of using your smartphone for recording, but beware, the sound quality may not be up to par. Investing in basic gear might serve you better. The good news? It won't burn a hole in your pocket. The central lesson here is, you can create a top-notch recording studio without stretching your budget. The first thing you'll need is a good microphone. And, contrary to what you might think, good doesn't necessarily equate to expensive. In fact, you can nab a pretty decent microphone for around $100. If you're a novice in the podcast realm, it might be wise to opt for a USB microphone that plugs directly into your computer. However, if you've got some experience under your belt or are planning to record with multiple microphones, then an XLR microphone would be a better choice. These don't connect directly to your computer. They require cables and a soundboard to function. A satisfactory soundboard can be purchased for roughly $100. Of course, don't forget to buy a stand for your microphone. Moreover, you'll need a quiet space to record. Perhaps you can't afford a professional sound studio just yet. Not to worry, any room replete with carpets, books, and soft furnishings that absorb sound will make for an excellent recording spot. A walk-in closet brimming with clothes might be your perfect solution. Next, you'll need software to record and edit your podcast. Specifically, a digital audio workstation. And here's some great news. Some of these are available for free. The McElroys have always relied on Audacity, an open source program to edit their podcasts. They vouch for its user-friendly interface and the opportunity it provides to learn new skills, which could come in handy if you decide to switch to a different program later. For instance, Audacity enabled Griffin McElroy to edit complex podcasts like Adventure Zone, which has as many as 30 tracks. So as you can see, a tight budget need not deter you from setting up your maiden studio. Nestled in your closet with a quality mic, you're already well on your way to producing a well-crafted podcast. Part 5. Master the Art of Hosting. It's all about staying engaged and showing passion. When you ponder over some of your favorite podcasts, what comes to mind? More often than not, you'll find a captivating host at the heart of the show. They are the ones who navigate through various segments, extract the best from their guests, and give a personal touch to the subject. So, how can you emulate the traits of these amazing hosts and become one yourself? Well, there's no magical recipe for success here. Great hosts come in all forms. Some might tickle your funny bone with their humor and spontaneity, while others might pull you in with their intense, serious demeanor. It's often said that the key to successful hosting lies in being yourself, and while that holds some truth, it's only part of the picture. Hosting a podcast is more of a performance. So yes, you should be yourself, but be the version of yourself that is most animated, engaging, and passionate. Think of how you behave when narrating an exciting story at a social gathering, not when you're battling a hangover and sleepily conversing with your mom. The central takeaway here is, 
Effective hosting hinges on maintaining focus and showcasing enthusiasm. As a host, your primary duty is to remain focused throughout the podcast. You can ensure this by mentally prepping yourself before you hit record and eliminating potential distractions. Close unnecessary browser tabs and turn off your phone to prevent your attention from being divided. Podcasts can be completely unscripted, fully scripted, or a blend of both. If you're conducting an impromptu podcast with co hosts or guests, honing your listening skills is imperative. Stay engaged in the conversation and employ body language to assure your co host or guest that you are fully attentive. At the same time, dedicate a small part of your brain to contemplate how you can meaningfully contribute to the ongoing conversation and keep it lively. When offering input, remember to use the improv principle of yes and. This means you acknowledge what your conversation partner has said and build upon it, thereby maintaining the flow of the conversation. Occasionally, when you sense the conversation is drifting aimlessly, you can use no but to steer it back on track. Remember, one major advantage of recording a podcast is the ability to edit it. So those awkward silences or sudden interruptions by a barking dog can be effortlessly edited out. Indeed, mastering the skill of editing is crucial for any budding podcaster. So, how do you get proficient at it? Stay tuned to find out. Part 6. Sculpting Your Podcast. The Multi-Step Process of Editing. Picture this. You've got a sizable slab of marble, and your task is to meticulously chisel it into Michelangelo's David. That's akin to editing a podcast. The process necessitates multiple stages of pruning, refining, and polishing to get your podcast to hit just the right notes. Firstly, you've got to hack away the unnecessary chunks, things you definitely don't want to be part of your podcast. These may include the sound of chewing, a dog's bark in the backdrop, or someone mentioning they need to take a bathroom break. If you've left a significant pause or used a dog clicker to mark these instances during the recording, it becomes easier to pinpoint and remove them. The key takeaway here is, editing a podcast involves several stages of refinement. Removing the glaringly unwanted bits is the easy part. What proves to be more challenging is deciding which parts to retain. Listen to the entire recording from start to finish. Making a note of potential edits alongside their timestamps for easy reference later. Refrain from making cuts as you go along, as you may inadvertently remove something that ends up being a crucial talking point later in the conversation. Once you've given the recording a thorough listen, you can begin making edits. If you're aiming to whittle down an hour-long conversation into a succinct 20-minute podcast, focus on isolating the most engaging bits and stringing them together. If your podcast follows a more conversational, meandering style, trim down the parts that disrupt the natural flow. Having picked out the segments you wish to keep, you can now move to the polishing phase. Ensure that your transitions are smooth and sound authentic. You could consider removing unnecessary filler words and cutting out awkward silences if they don't contribute to the narrative. At this stage, you can also introduce music to your podcast. Sure, using a Coldplay song may be out of reach, but you can always connect with smaller bands to seek permission to use their music or explore freely available music on websites like creativecommons.org. If you possess a flair for music, you could even create your own melodies using software like GarageBand. Once you've got a solid version of your podcast ready, it's time to seek feedback. Ask for specific input, such as opinions about the transitions. Make sure to approach someone whose judgment you trust. After you've received the feedback, incorporate it into your final round of edits. And voila, you're ready to launch your podcast. Part 7, finding the right hosting service and establishing an online presence is key. You've poured your heart into crafting your podcast, meticulously editing and fine-tuning to create a version that resonates. But how do you get it out there for the world to hear? It's not going to gain traction sitting on your desktop. To stand a fighting chance at success, you need to launch it into the online sphere. 
The crucial first step is finding a hosting service, a reliable server where your podcast will reside. Changing hosts can be a colossal nuisance, so investing time to find the right one is well worth it. Ask yourself, has the service been in the game for a considerable period? Does it come recommended by successful podcasters? Established players are likely to stick around longer. The core message here is, a robust hosting service and online presence are fundamental. Investigate the financial aspect of the hosting service. Some services offer free uploads for beginners. Certain hosting companies also provide access to advertising networks capable of retroactively inserting ads into your shows. Consider if the hosting service offers analytics. Can it supply valuable data about the frequency of downloads of your podcast? Can it provide insights about the geographical distribution of your listeners? The McElroys rely on such data to refine their episodes and decide on the location for live performances. Finally, look at the value the hosting service contributes to your online presence. Does it feature your podcast on its website? And is it user-friendly? Does it offer an embedded player for listeners to conveniently access your podcast? Once you've picked a hosting service that aligns with your needs, the subsequent step is to get your podcast listed on major platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. These platforms serve as directories for podcasts, making them accessible to millions of people. Registering your podcast is typically free, but ensure to do it meticulously. Make sure that the metadata is accurate and that your podcast is correctly categorized. Now that your podcast is discoverable, it's time to cultivate your audience. Engage with your listeners. Write back when someone reaches out and assure them that their feedback is heard and appreciated. Social media can prove to be a powerful tool in audience engagement. Utilize platforms like Facebook or Twitter to announce new episodes or special events, share sneak peeks, and solicit user feedback on your released episodes. Part 8. Monetizing Your Podcast a blend of creativity and tenacity. You've launched your podcast, so the cash should start flowing in soon, right? That's an optimistic assumption. The reality is that gaining recognition and amassing wealth in the podcasting realm is far from easy. Although your new podcast may not rake in enough money for a Caribbean getaway, there are multiple avenues to fund your podcast and potentially turn it into a full-time venture. The main point to note here is You can monetize your podcast by harnessing creativity and persistence. Crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter or Indiegogo can prove effective in generating income, particularly in the initial stages of your podcast. These platforms allow you to directly solicit funds from your listeners. They also double as a promotional tool for your project. Services like Patreon enable your listeners to transform into regular patrons, funding your project bit by bit. The advantage of crowdfunding is that it aids in establishing a rapport with your audience. However, it does require substantial time and energy. Once you've established a sizable audience, consider selling branded merchandise or hosting live events to generate funds. You could get your feet wet by participating in a podcast festival or opening for a more popular podcast before branching out independently. This can offer you precious live performance experience before you undertake the financial risk of booking a theater. Among the most profitable, and frequent, methods of earning money from podcasts is advertising. Dynamic advertising enables the automatic insertion of new ads in podcasts as they're downloaded. Ad agencies act as intermediaries between podcasts and commercial brands, negotiating a fair rate for the hosts, Your earnings depend on your audience size and the extent of effort you're willing to put in for the advertiser. A sponsored episode, where the content of your podcast is tailored to promote commercial content, can be extremely rewarding. It's crucial to maintain a clear demarcation between your content and the commercial content to retain the integrity of your show. Finding a product that aligns well with your show is also key. In all honesty, The earnings from your podcast might never be enough for that Caribbean island. However, after eight years of podcasting, the McElroy brothers managed to quit their day jobs and dedicate their time to something they truly loved. And that's a payoff worth aspiring to. 
final summary. The essential lesson to take away is, embarking on the podcasting journey requires a starting point and a willingness to learn through mistakes, not high-end software or a state-of-the-art recording studio. Nor does it require exceptional talent. What it truly demands is perseverance and an openness to learning. Mistakes are inevitable, but they are part of the learning curve. The golden rule for any podcaster is to acknowledge and respect the time your audience invests in your podcast. Their time is valuable and they are choosing to spend it on your podcast, so every minute of your podcast should be worthwhile. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.